Dennis Schroeder from the Thunder in a trade to signing the reigning sixth man of the year in Montrez Harrell, bringing in Wes Matthews, of course, signing Powell's younger brother, Marcus Saul. No doubt, Lakers GM and VP of Basketball Ops, Rob Blinka, gave the Lakers a chance at bringing home the hardware once again. One of the things that was very purposeful about our offseason was to, um, to try to get younger. Um, you know, I think we have, uh, obviously, again, with LeBron, and AD is the two pillars, our two captains, our two unicorns. It's being able to find young players that can um, win now and also carry forward the torch with uh, AD. Line up, lining up with his age, I think Schroeder's a great example of that. Um, obviously, Montrez, another great example, just lining up with AD's age. And I think we want to we want to strive to try to keep our young players that it, that that we have on this team. We like the core. We like how it lines up. And um, I think Dennis, Kyle, Kuzma is up for an extension. These are things that we're we're continuing to focus on. But we like how the team um, got younger, faster, and uh, our intention would be to try to keep keep that identity and that core together. Rob, if I could start you just with your thoughts on the impact of LeBron and AD's uh, signing and, you know, committing to uh, future years with the franchise, what what is the, the biggest thing that you take out of that and what that means? I think probably the word trust. You know, I think um, AD and LeBron, I think, share a common quality um, with us of just being about the work um, and trusting the work. And... Uh, I think yesterday, um, when we got the commitment from both of those players, it was just a, it was a great day that was defined by the trust we've built in, um, in the relationships with those guys. I was wondering to the, to the extent that you can talk to us about those discussions and that decision process to, to get LeBron under contract through 2023, what was important to you? It wasn't even a, a debate for us. It was something that um, was very clear um, and we think he's going to be effective and, and, and provide extraordinary value um, for every year he decides to play as a Laker. And I think what was especially um, satisfying and um, exciting about this is I think that now you can see with the legacy he's establishing as a Laker um, that his greatness will be defined here. And um, I'm sure he'll hang many jerseys someday, but we hope one of those will be a Lakers jersey. So now that LeBron has won a title, I ask you guys this. He's most likely to end his career here. Will we see LeBron's jersey in the rafters one day, Press? I think we will, You know, especially if he wins one more championship over the next few years, which I think is going to happen. And even if he doesn't, you know, what a great debate. And I think it ends with, yes, he, he will get that uh, jersey up among there with the Laker greats. I mean, Kobe has two of them. Why, why not give one to LeBron, too? I mean, pretty soon the Lakers will be in the triple digits uh, for some new players down the road. But, you know, I think other players would be honored by this. Uh, Cedric Zabalos, uh, Lou Williams, Stu Lance wore number 23. And, of course, uh, one of your favorite players, Geet uh, Von Wafer, also wore number 23. Wow, that's a deep dive so you just went into right <laughs> I think, I think at, at the very least, LeBron uh, is definitely on pace to get that jersey retired up there. Uh, also in Cleveland and Miami, I was too. I going to say Cleveland and Miami, too. What, Quite a few places. What do you think, Kyle? You see it going that way? Yeah, well, first of all, great question by that last reporter to get that. <laughs> uh, wow, tremendous surgical question there. Um, yeah, I, I think it's obvious. I think LeBron sealed his jersey when he won the championship. And, and it's not just championship because the Lakers obviously have many. They have 17, um, and LeBron doesn't begin to stack up against the best Lakers in that category. But I, I just think of where the franchise was before LeBron mm -hmm. decides to walk into cap space, um, you know, decides to come, decides to bring his talents. And, and from there, every good thing that's happened in the last two years has come from that decision. Anthony Davis wanted to be in L.A. because LeBron was there and you could compete. Um, you know, they, he guided them through this really challenging time with the pandemic and into the bubble championship. And now going long-term, um, as many as five years and maybe more, um, I, I think it's 
undoubted that he'll one day uh, have a jersey hanging up. Yeah, great, great point, Kyle. And also, let's not forget, in 2016, Kobe Bryant's last year, this team won 17 games. Yeah. And Kobe had to drag them to that 17 with his big 60-point uh, uh, outburst against Utah. So what a turnaround <laughs> in just a, a few short years. LeBron, Incredible. a big reason, if not the reason why. And, and also, guys, the Lakers, Kyle, they did get younger in Schroeder and Harrell. I mean, are these the type of players you can see running alongside AD in the future? Yeah, and I think that's definitely part of Rob's thinking. Um, you know, Dennis Schroeder is up for a new contract now. Next summer, and I think, you know, part of the idea when you bring in a guy like that, when you trade a guy like Danny Green and a draft pick, you're thinking, well, I can get more out of this than just one year of Dennis Schroeder. And if we win, maybe he's going to make a similar decision as AD did. Um, so, I mean, you, you see the, the new contract for KCP. He's about AD's age and, and in for the next three years. You can extend Kyle Kuzma if you guys figure out a, a term before the season starts. Um, and obviously Montrez. On the, on the hook for the next two years. Um, there's options to, to be young at the core around AD. Prez, how important is it to put some youth around AD and LeBron so you're not only planning for the present yeah. and making a run, but you also got an eye on the future a little bit? Well, that was a great graphic. You know, 10 guys under the age of 28 right now. Uh, last year's team had nine guys over uh, 31 or over by the time the season ended. So you're getting a lot younger overnight. And again, uh, coups for, for uh, uh, Rob Palenka across the board. He had very little uh, trade capital, not a lot of draft picks to, to throw away because he's traded so many uh, already over the next several years. To make this team that much younger, that much faster, that much more appealing, uh, really impressive work by him. All right, guys, still to come. The Brow has plenty of confidence. The Lakers. You know, uh, we played longer than everybody else, had a shorter offseason than everybody else. So, you know, the odds are, are stacked, stacked against us from, from that standpoint. And, you know, the identity of, of what, what and who we were last year uh, has got to be repeated. You know, if we're going to try to repeat as champions, you know, we've got to have the defense mindset. Uh, that's going to be the, the first message of day one of camp. And, um, you know, togetherness, you know, sharing the basketball and selflessness. You know, those two things were, were pillars for us last year. And, um, you know, that'll have to be the same for this year. As a champion, you know, everybody's going to, you're going to get everyone's best shot. Everyone's coming after you. You have a target on your back. So I think um, you're going to find that motivation. I think we have a bunch of new guys, too, who, who want that, who want, you know, to compete for a championship, who wants to, who wants to win a championship. So, um, I think we'll, I think we'll be fine in that, in, uh, in that, in that sense. But, um, it is hard to, to go out there, you know, in a quick turnaround to, you know, compete at a high level and, and try to, you know, reclaim a title again. But I think we have, you know, the mindset, the coaching staff, the players that make sure that we're able to do so. The NBA season, it's quickly approaching. 37 games have been announced for the purple and gold to their quest to repeat. Time for some rank them. A little different now. <laughs> you love this game. I do, I do love this game. I used to like the touch screen, but we, we don't have that going on right now. So you guys are going to rank. First half of the schedule, three games. Your top three. Brez, we're going to go with number three, games to watch. Give us your third. Yeah, I'm going to go a little bit into the first half of the schedule. I'm going to go at uh, Denver uh, in February. Kind of a nice little where are they now. Kind of a check-in point for the Lakers as we get close to the halfway point. Obviously, a, a pretty fun uh, West Conference Finals. Uh, Denver lost a couple guys, picked up some guys. Lakers, dramatically different. And, uh, you know, Phil Jackson used to always say, you don't know much about your team until about two months into the regular season. That's going to be all, right around this point. Yeah, you know, uh, almost like that uh, six-week right mark, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know who you are. Exactly. He always said that uh, right around uh, Christmas was a pretty good indicator of what you got. And uh, Christmas comes in December, yeah. which is when we're starting the season pretty much. So uh, I'll take this game in uh, February against Denver. Good choice. What about for you, Kyle? Yeah, just a, as a spoiler, I'm not I'm not picking any games in the first, you know, two or three weeks uh, for the Smart Lakers. Uh, but I, go, going I, the, the game that I think is going to be the first significant challenge is is at Milwaukee on January 21st. Um, you know, the Bucks have done some retooling. Um, and uh, did not get Bogdan Bogdanovich. I think that would have really um, pushed them into the sphere that the Lakers are in right now. But, um, you know, that we'll see what Giannis wants to do and, and how motivated he is and um, how much that team changes with Drew Holiday. And I'm really excited to see what that matchup of potential title favorites is like. Perez, number two. 
Kyle's number three is my number two. I also like this uh, Bucks game. Uh, remember the Lakers last year, Milwaukee, not their best showing. Uh, LeBron had trouble shooting, and uh, the Bucks ended up winning. Uh, Giannis, that was a three-point threat that night, too. There, there you go. Yeah. yeah, Giannis is actually hitting threes. Uh, a lot has changed uh, in the world since then, but uh, I want to see how the Lakers do against my preseason favorite to win the East. As Kyle said, the Bucks could have been a little bit more strong than they really are, but I do like that uh, Drew Holiday pickup for sure. Huge for them. All right, Kyle, give him number two. Yeah, sliding over to the maybe the other title favorite in the East, Miami Heat. Um, they're coming to L.A. Uh, in February, I believe. Yeah, so it, that should be a good one. Um, they've retooled a little bit, um, but obviously you just want to see what kind of growth you get out of young guys like Bam, out of Tyler Hero, um, uh, and, and what Jimmy Butler is still bringing to the table, so you can find that finals energy for the regular season. Remember, they were, what, a fifth seed? Yeah. Last year, right, yeah. going into the bubble and yeah. caught fire. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see uh, how, how they come out. All right, Brez, uh, your number one game to watch in the first half of the season. Well, I disagree with Kyle. I'm picking a game in the first two weeks. In fact, I'm going to take uh, Lakers Clippers right off the bat. Oh, Brez, come on. <laughs> Too soon? Too soon? I mean, hey, LeBron might have played all of 11 seconds in the preseason, mm -hmm. but I want to see where these guys are. I want to see what he it's looks like. I, I want to see what AD looks like. Uh, how, how is Schroeder and Montrez in a Laker uniform? How are the Clippers? The last we saw them, there was a, a yet another monumental collapse in the second round. How, how are they looking? Motivated, new coach. Yeah, a, a lot of new things for them, a lot of new things for the Lakers. Uh, one game, the first is 72, but I, I'm always excited to see them, no matter what time of year they play. Why not make it opening night? Kyle Goon, number one. Yeah, uh, on just a, a more solemn note, uh, this game really stuck out to me when I looked at the schedule. January 27th, the Lakers are going to the Philadelphia 76ers. Last time, last year in Philadelphia, um, the game before Kobe Bryant died, obviously it's just such a unique spot because it's Kobe's hometown. Um, and I'll just never forget just the, the, the tragedy of just feeling um, just a lot of contemplation about Kobe, his career, his place in NBA history, and then to, to lose him as we did. So, um, you know, I think it's going to be um, obviously a solemn game, but hopefully a special game. I was getting national TV play, and I think uh, there will be something to look forward to out of that. Well done, guys. Six great games on the board. Still to come when LeBron James says something really Boy, cool. Elgin Baylor just introduced officially the Lakers Classic and City Edition yeah. jerseys for the upcoming season. Look for the upcoming season here, paying homage to when the franchise made the move to L.A. in 1960. You like those, Brez? Or love what? It. Love them. Uh, love the color scheme. Uh, I, I think it's going to be a really cool uh, jersey and off to the right start by getting Elgin. Uh, I wish I'd seen more of him play. You know, we, we grew up in the 70s, Geet, and 80s. Just get, didn't get yeah. a lot of Elgin time. Uh, more of Kareem and Magic uh, uh, connection there, but... What, what a great start for uh, introducing these jerseys. Kyle, you like the blue or the white? You had um, you had personally, I'm, I don't love teams getting tremendously out of their color range, but I think uh, the, the video was a little bit more endearing. To, so I, I think I, overall, all things considered, I like the white a little more, but I, I don't love teams like, I mean, it's purple and gold. It's such a good combination. Like, why get too far out of it? But I mean, thank, I, thanks I, for coming around, Debbie Downer. Get, over there. get off That's my lawn while you're at it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen, Hoop Central Twitter account sent out a question asking fans to name an NBA player you think will take a giant leap this season. LeBron James huh. responded with Kyle Kuzma. Kuz. Listen, guys, Kuz hears the noise. There are expectations. We talk a lot about it on the show, especially with the young core all being traded away and him staying a Laker. Uh, this is a vote of confidence from, from LeBron. What's the significance of this, in your opinion, Bress? I think LeBron is looking ahead to the games where you know people might be sitting out for, for rest purposes, and he's saying, Kuz is going to be that guy. He's going to get opportunities this year. Maybe last year was a bit of an adjustment for Kuz. He was no longer the uh, most favored player by LeBron on the Lakers. Not a lot of long-distance connections uh, in easy buckets for Kuz from LeBron. Uh, that went to AD for, for obvious reasons. Uh, Kuz, though, is going to get a, a little bit more chance to spread his wings, actually. I, I think there's going to be some times where LeBron sits out. Remember last year, uh, back in January, uh, game against OKC, a very good team. No LeBron, no AD, no problem. Kyle Kuzma scored 36 points. That might happen again, especially early in the season, those type of uh, chances for Kuz. You know, Kyle, I feel like I spend a lot of time kind of defending Kuz because I think the expectations sometimes aren't realistic. Uh, 
bottom line, he's a guy that when LeBron or AD don't play, he gets 20. That, that's just the truth. You, 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 you can look at the stats. So, so there's, there's value in that with the type of guy that when he gets the volume, he can score. But when those guys are healthy, he just has to fit a role. Uh, and, and that's what he had to learn how to do last year. Where, where do you come out on the expectations for Kuz? Yeah, I, and I think it's it's tricky. I actually take a slightly more cynical view of, of LeBron's endorsement of Kuz in that, you know, he's up for an extension. Um, he, You know, they might not reach it. He might be a restricted free agent next year. Um, although I think the Lakers should look at in his value because as we're talking about, I mean, he's, he's a valuable role player. He can start. He can uh, play a little defense. He can shoot a little bit, although he has to shoot better next year. Um, so he has those signs of, and some of those tools that the Lakers are really going to need at the right age and, and perhaps the right price. So I think this is LeBron's way of saying, hey, stay invested. Your teammates believe in you. You may be coming up against some some contract stuff in the next year that will feel uncomfortable and the noise may continue, but stay with it and, and we believe in you. Brez, he's a streaky guy. If he mm -hmm. gets consistent from that three-point line, what can that do for him? That's the key. I mean, regular season uh, last year, 32%. Actually dropped down the playoffs to 31%. Remember, a great rookie year behind the arc, never quite found that stroke. And he was working on it, too. Remember, he revealed uh, in the bubble, uh, he spent a lot of time during the, uh, the four-month break uh, just kind of sitting in a chair, working on just uh, trying to shoot different ways. Uh, it looked good at times, but he just needs to kind of really get better behind the arc. That'll help him a lot. We're moving on. The games will continue. Coming up next, a <laughs> schedule release edition of Fill in the Blank. That's next. Fill it up. Of the music, it means we're playing a game. <laughs> fill in the blank. I do love it. Schedule. <laughs> fill in the blank. Yeah, special, special edition. edition. Yes. Uh, the one word you would use to describe the Lakers schedule is what, Brett? Surreal. I, and I, I'm going to use a lot more words because what is it? I mean, it, obviously, it's a mark of our time. Uh, but, you know, back-to-back -back in San Antonio, back-to-back uh, -back in Houston, uh, very early in the schedule, uh, about a month uh, into the schedule, back-to-back -back here in L.A. against OKC. That's what teams have to do these days. Uh, not going to be a ton of travel. Uh, but in, in the very real, real sense, though, there still is going to be a Grammy trip through the, the Eastern Conference that we talked about earlier in the show. So it's, it's just weird. It's just weird. Can't take the beat rider out of him, Kyle. Still thinking like a beat rider, too. Back-to-back -to, -back to San Antonio. You would not love that, would you? No, uh, sir. The one word you would use to describe the Lakers schedule is blank, Kyle. Uh, first of all, uh, Brez, when you use more than one word, it defeats the purpose of the game. Second of all, uh, the word I, I use is grind. Um, you, and it's and related to what we were just saying. It's just, I mean, two Brian. two back-to-back -back games in San Antonio, two back-to-back -back games in Memphis. Right. Um, just a, a lot of repetitiveness, especially early on in the schedule. You see the Grammy trip is sort of the, the bigger gamble uh, after a month of the season that travel is going to be a little safer and, and guys are going to be a little more attentive to the practices. So it's going to be tough and it's going to be isolating, sort of like the bubble was just um, just differently because you're, you're going to have to take a lot of the same precautions, but on your own as opposed to on a campus. The Lakers record in the first half of the season will be blank. 28 and 9. Uh, you know, not a lot, I, I kind of went uh, bullish on the Lakers. Th thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I really think they're going to get off to a good start. Yeah. We, we already talked about how the first, you know, three of the first four games are going to be tough, but then a lot of, lot of non-playoff teams on, on the docket coming up. Uh, you do have that long East Conference trip. That's going to be tough. But I think they can get uh, 28 out of 37. Should I raise my expectations, Brez? I'm, I'm just cruising. I, yeah. Maybe I'm just... Well, I, I had trouble counting how many games there the are. Off, you know, it was a 37, yeah. 35. A producer, uh, Ryan, had helped me. I was, I was struggling. 28-9. All right, what about you? Kyle Goon, Lakers record in the first half will be... I'm going 25 and, and 12, and the, the exercise I actually went through is I went through every game and and picked what I thought would winner, and then oh, I wow. honestly I just Appreciate I that. subtracted two two uh, wins from the the total that I had because I just think that it's just a big calling for the Lakers to to play their best at the start of the season. I actually think it'll be really tough, especially the first two weeks. They may lose some games that you would expect them to win. Um, you know, LeBron and AD kind of getting back up into shape. Um, a, a lot of the returning cast getting up into shape. Although Montrez Harrell and Dennis Schroeder, I think, will help a lot uh, carry the load. Um, I do think it will be tougher 
um, just because of the conditioning aspect. But there's so much more depth, though, which, which I like about this team. Good work ethic by Kyle Goon. Went through every game. He really did. Non-Laker game you are looking forward to the most is what? Kyle's not going to like it. You're not going to like it. Opening night. Warriors, Nets. I want to see. I like what, it. You, oh, you do? Yeah. Not too soon. Those teams haven't played in nine months. I know. <laughs> I mean, what, what's going to be like? Is Steph and uh, KD, are they going to kind of kind of brush elbows with each other? Uh, what, how's that going to go? Uh, you know, I, I wish Clay had not gotten hurt, first and foremost. Glad because then, that. you know, a really nice uh, matchup. But still, yeah. you know, it's all KD versus his old guys. And I'm sure they have a few things to kind of uh, I'm show him on the court. Too. Yeah. I'm really looking forward for sure. to that game. All right. Uh, what about for you? Non-Laker game. You're most looking forward to is what? I'm sticking with Brooklyn, uh, looking ahead to Martin Luther King weekend, uh, Nets and Bucks. And in my mind, that's an Eastern Conference Finals preview. Um, KD will be able to see kind of how well he's looking off of that really serious Achilles injury. Um, if Kyrie ever talks to us, uh, if <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you know if Giannis and the Bucks are, are ready to actually go to the finals this year, so. To me, that's going to be the first real real indicator of, hey, who's going to the finals out of the East? Uh, Kyle, rumor has it Warriors and Nets will actually be uh, holding a shoot around on the Hamptons. Are you, will you do a little work on that and see if that's <laughs> that's true or false? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've done a lot of work on the golf courses. All right, I appreciate that. that, that would All right, last one. Ryan's in a hurry here. The Laker player who needs the preseason the most is what? Uh, I'm going to go with Schroeder. You know, of their four uh, big-name signings, he, he's a guy who's been out the longest. Not by much, you know, knocked out in the first round in the Game 7, but... I, I want to see, he, he has said already publicly, he wants to be a starter on this team. So what, what's it going to look like in preseason? Uh, is he going to be that starter on opening night against the Clippers? I want to see what he looks like with this uh, offense as well. Laker player who needs the preseason the most is Kyle Goon. Uh, I'll keep it short, Kyle Kuzma. He's going to play a lot of minutes for the older guys, in my opinion. And the Lakers can extend them up until December 21st. Hey, you want it? Get to the facility, do the practices, do the preseason, and prove it. Tell you what, Ryan, our producer, and I think maybe you're being a little hard on Kuz. What do you think? You, you trying to motivate Kuz over there? Kuz, not on the Kuz bus. He's, he's, he's riding him a little bit. I like it. I've been on the Kuz bus longer than anyone in, the, in this room. I created so the Kuz the bus. bus. <laughs> Brez drove the bus. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good stuff, guys. I appreciate the... Uh, yeah, the thought you guys put into it. We did. Wait, yeah. I, I didn't put the thought like Kyle did going over every single game, so that...